Hello and welcome, Fish here with another BMS video. In this video we're going to look at BMS 434 and the comm system. We're going to look at it in two parts. The first part will be a bit of groundwork looking at the mission schedule screen and how comms frequencies and presets are assigned um, based on the dynamically based on the setup of the components in the flight. For instance, the take off, the departure and the arrival air bases or runways. We're also going to look at the menu system and how the menu system interacts with the comms and the dependencies there and we just have a quick look back as to how uh, the whole system works in BMS 433 and before. And the second part of the video will be a quick flight uh, taken from ramp start through the various comms ladder elements into the air we talk to some of the different um, elements including AWACS and our flight in the air and then we'll request recovery and follow the comms ladder back down to um, landing and to ramp. Okay, we're going to start by looking uh, at BMS and we're going to look at the mission schedule and see how the frequencies get assigned there. So I'm going to pick a tactical engagement. I've got it there, refuel 2. I'm going to press commit to that. And we're, by default, we're put into an AWACS aircraft. You can see fish is assigned to that seat there. And I'm going to look at how this information uh, gets stored relative to how it used to get stored. And it used to get stored in a file which was the user in a file in the config folder and minus fish INI just asked me to reload it so um, we can see the information that's stored here. We have all the presets, all the comments for both BHF and UHF. The only place that these came from in the past were from this in a file. And this any file could be changed either by the user directly going into the any file here and changing the contents and saving it, or by opening the data cartridge in the in the mission schedule screen and changing it, or by using a third party application like the weapons delivery planner or something like that. And that's pretty much changed now in that uh, these uh, frequencies and descriptions are now generated dynamically depending on what you've done in the game. And the first part, which are these descriptors here, they come from a, a, a new file called commsb. And this is a, a, a set of basic comments that are built up into a file. Although really this file is not important anymore because it's what, it's what gets built into the 3D environment when you start the mission. That's important now. Now, if I make a change to, to something here, for instance, let's say I call it, and I want to make a change to that frequency and save it as I would in the past. And let's say I go back out to the tactical engagement screen and select my mission again and come in. And I go back into this file, you can see the game has reloaded that file and I press yes to that and we'll see it's restored the original frequency. So the way these frequencies are stored, um, again, they come from the mission and these frequencies are related to the default that we're in here. You can see we're in, we're in this AWACS flight and we're in the, the pit as that flight. And that flight has these particular frequencies associated with You can see, uh, we look at 269500, that's the um, UHF-3, that's assigned to the tower. So that's an, this is on Yishan, and we can see if we look at the um, Yishan tower frequencies here, we can see it's 269.5. It's 269.5. And if we look at it down in our briefing All right, screen, listen up. and thumb down to Yishan Tower, we can see 269. 
269.5. So that all those uh, frequencies are aligned. The other frequencies in the ladder work in exactly the same way. I'm just focusing in on the tower because um, that gives you a good idea how the frequencies are generated. Let's look at the, um, the data cartridge. So that's the other place we can see that frequency. So we go to comms and we're in uniform here. So we're going to thumb through to uniform 3. And you can see it's departure tower for uniform 3 and it's 269500. So by default, this information is loaded up into all the relevant places where we find that and that's determined by this mission not determined anymore by the frequencies that are listed on this uh, fish in a file so let's move on now to a different um, airbase and we're going to move on from Yishan now down to Kunsan. So we're going to choose a flight um, for Kunsan. Now choosing the flight on its own doesn't make any changes to uh, what we've seen. Yeah, you can see we're still on 269.5. What we have to do is we have to choose a cockpit from that flight. And we go back to the data cartridge and the comms. We now see we now see that we've moved on from 269.5 to 292.3 and everything else mimics that so if we go back to our briefing All right, screen up. we can see we've changed now to terror is Kunsan and it's 269.3 and the other frequencies on the stack here related to that air base will change in the same way. So you can see that those, those frequencies now get dynamically assigned and they're dynamically assigned and available when you get into the pit. Let's look now at how the new frequencies break down compared to the old frequencies. And I have, um, I have two charts here, Consan uh, New and Consan Old uh, to compare. And we can see the frequencies there for the old version. We had a terror frequency here. And we also had some additional ground and departure information here. These have all now been consolidated into a single line, as you can see there. And that single line now contains, contains the ATIS frequency, which is the uh, general information, weather forecast, and so on, that's available from that, um, from that base. We have the ground frequency now, which was the one in here. We have the terror frequency, which was already here. And now we have the approach, the approach and departure. And note that the approach and departure are all one frequency. So if we come back to BMS, we can see. If I look now, we've selected that flight. And if I look all now right, at the briefing, up. you can see those frequencies are now going to match up. So we have our... The only one that we yeah we have our ATIS frequency here departure ATIS is one two five two two five you can see it there and ground two seven three five two five ground is two seven three five two five two nine two three hundred we saw that already and two nine two six five so you can see how the the frequencies get assigned now in the game when you select the the particular flight. So it's safe to say that we can ignore the INI file anymore. It doesn't actually provide us with any um, any useful functionality. We should the, the whole principle of the new format that the user shouldn't need to change any of these descriptions. And I'm guessing the game will using that that comms B file as the game is further developed additional frequencies may be added here and the descriptions will be replaced in there so that we'll see the new descriptions down here in place of the open options so let's now have a quick look at the and the the frequencies now and the frequency ladder as they describe it and i've just made some uh, short listed notes here in my flight notes just highlighting in a quick table the descriptions of what each one is and what they do you can see we have the UHF and the VHF frequencies. Now these pretty much descriptions pretty much align to what we saw in the INI file uh, there, the default INI file settings. 
um, and these are not going to change. So we have first presets in the uniform presets are the four departure frequencies for base ops, ground, terror, and approach and departure share the same preset. Five is a placeholder for something to be implemented. Six is for AWACS and tactical. I have a note in there, tactical IDM. So in order to be able to use the IDM in the cockpit and show your flight on the HSD and um, on your flight radar, you're going to have to be tuned into this preset. These presets here will be different depending on what airbase you're on, but the AWACS won't. The next three, once again, are dynamic and they're to do with the approach airbase. And we can see that um, 7, 8 and 9 um, are approach, terror and ground. Now, if the, if the departure airbase and the, the approach airbase are exactly the same, these three, these uh, presets will have matching pairs. So nine will be matched with two, three will be matched with eight, and so on. My advice for, for people who are following this process um, in the aircraft is that they, they follow the approach that they change presets, they go through presets one to four when they're departing, and then they go through presets seven, eight, and nine when they're arriving. Now, if we look at the, the difference between seven, eight, and nine, and two, three, and four in our plan here. All right, listen up. We can see our departure, ground, terror, and departure frequencies are those. And if we look at our arrival ones, which are these ones here, seven, eight, and nine, our arrival are matched with those above two seven three. So it's safe to say that if we in in the, in the, in our takeoff we use a preset. We start off by default, whatever default you put you you, you set up in the data cartridge. But we go through the ladder. We go from two to three to four, and then when we are being recovered. We should go back down from 7 to 8 to 9, and that's the process. And the benefit of that is that if you do happen to be on a flight where your departure airbase is different from your arrival, you will always have the correct presets. So just moving on from, from those, we have 10, 11, and 12 are the alternative approach terror and ground. In some cases, the alternative is maybe just an airstrip, and it doesn't have a... Um, let's see what it is on here. I'm not sure uh, the detail. All right, of listen this up. One. Um, the alternative, alternative approach terror and ground. You can see they have separate frequencies. But if we chose Yishan, and I think Yishan is the alternative field, has only got a, an airstrip, and we jump into that. Yeah. All right, and listen up. The briefing, we can see that the alternative has got the same frequency preset for each of these. Or sorry, on any one of those three presets, we'll be talking to the same frequency. Now, the last, the last one over here that's important is the refueling. And it's 13, so it's uniform 13 if you want to contact the, the tanker. So you'll always be handing off from your um, ground stuff. Once you're in the air, you'll probably be talking to the AWACS um, while you're in the air, and you may actually then want to talk to the tanker, so you'll be handing off from the um, from preset six, uniform six, to um, to uniform thirteen, and then you'll probably be going back to uniform six, and then on approach you'll be coming in to uniform seven for the approach, then handing off to terror eight, and to arrival nine. On the Victor frequencies VHF, you can see there are a number of um, duplicate uh, frequencies, although these don't seem to appear now on the new charts. So I'm guessing it's probably not going to be needed in uh, most flight situations. On the, on the Victor side, you can see the important ones. You have to thumb the ATIS frequency in.
And the best way to do that is All find right, it from the up. briefing. And it's somewhere down here. There it is, departure AITS. It's 120.255. Now you can do a printout of this. What I like to do is I'll do a printout and have it as a a as my briefing document should I need to refer to um, those frequencies. So we can see the consan ATIS there is 120.255. I've done everything so far here and we can see whatever flight we got into will have the correct frequencies assigned for us. We have ha we have not had to load or save or do anything with the data cartridge. So coming back to the remainder of our VHF frequencies we can see that um, we've got um, the most important ones here are 15 to 19 and these are the frequencies the presets that are used for our flight and our package. And 15 is normally used for the intra-flight communications and this is the one you'll use if you wish to speak to AI if you have AIs in your flight. 16, 17, 18 and 19 are assigned to the the flights in the additional flights in the package. And I have a note here to say that the ATIS at the moment is dynamic in that it doesn't get put into a preset even though it's defined here as a preset. So you'll have to thumb it in as a a frequency. Finally we're going to um, look at the comms menus <coughs> system because com frequencies Known the com frequencies of, is of little value if you don't know who you want to be speaking to. And there is an order and a way this is done at the moment because of the additional menu items here. And um, there's a bit more complexity and there are a bit more, it's a larger number of uh, commands that we need to use to, to communicate within BMS. I've just made a short note here and I've grouped them. And we can see that we have AWACS vector main. Then we have combat one, two, three mission, um, formation one and two, and so on. And the additional ones we see here are ground, tower, approach, departure. And we have a common frequency, a common um, menu here. And note that this common menu is accessible from a number of different presets. So we, if we're talking to ground, tower, approach, or departure, we can automatically access the items in this menu. Now it's called common, but really it should be um, it should be called base information because it gives the QNH QFE um, landing and takeoff information about the airbase. Uh, essentially, we've got to, and I have annotated the channels or the presets that we should be in in order to communicate within any of these um, um, these menu items, and you can see. For the AWACS, both AWACS menus, we use Uniform 6. For all our wing, element, and flight menus, doesn't matter which ones we're in here, we use Victor 15. For our tanker, you can see there, we use Uniform 13. And remember, we'll be using the Uniform for all the operations, and we would normally shift to um, AWACS and then to tanker. For Terror T, we have different uh, channels that we need to use depending on what where we are um, in the ladder and what we're doing on the ground. So Uniform 3 access the Terror. Uniform 4 access the Departure. This is from the Departure Base. Departure Base may be different from the Arrival or the Approach Base, in which case uh, we'll be using Uniform 9 for, and it'll actually start here, we'll be using 7 for approach, then we move down to Uniform 8 for terror, and then finally on ground when we're going back to a ramp area, it'll be Uniform 9. So having covered all those items, I think it's appropriate now for us to jump in the pit and just um, go through, uh, by way of example, how these frequencies work uh, in the aircraft. Okay, we're in the mission scheduled screen now. We're going to take our training mission here at 5.30 out of Yishan. And we're going to jump in the pit. And 
we're going to have an AWACS in the air refueling aircraft in the air. We've also got an additional uh, DCA flight in the vicinity and we're going to commit to ramp. So I'm going to go through a startup sequence now <clears throat> and I have our track IR on pause because it's easier to navigate the pit using mouse at this stage, particularly during ramp start. So we're going to switch on our engine feed, CNI to UFC, put our anti-collision lights and position lights into standby. Main power to full on and our air source to normal. I'm going to cycle my physical throttle back to idle and then I'm going to <coughs> select the jet starter. Pin. Ground. Move EPU safety pin. Okay, we've reached our 25% um, revs for our jet starter, and now we're going to move our idle tent and cycle our throttle forward a little bit and back to idle. Start. Hydraulic pressure lights come off. Best starter switched off. Engine on. The weight of our rev cage has reached static at around 72%. Now let's start there. Maybe on ex we'll switch on our internal lights here so we can see. Maybe on its panel switches and EDI on. Moving forward to our hard points left and right, our control radar, radar altimeter to full and altimeter to radar. Move it across to our comms panel. They just boat comms one and two on. So that's all our comms are up. Put on our HMCS and close canopy. Black out some of that noise. Or do we do more power? Program 2 to manual. Moving forward to ground. Jettison enabled. Parking brake on. Landing lights on. Ground. Remove chocks. Okay. So you can see the ground menu um, up there as we start to speak to the ops um, at the moment. Just remove the chocks. Now I'm going to load our data cartridge. For the presets. Brighten our hood and switch on our nose wheel steering. So we're going to tune into our ATIS now while we're waiting on our alignment to complete. And I'm going to do this by, I've, pre I've got the frequency already and it's 135.8 <coughs> and it's a Victor frequency so it's
temperature, 13 degrees Celsius. Altimeter, 2974 inches. Yachin. Information Echo. Runway 08. Expect visual approach. Wind, 032 degrees, 09 knots, gusts 18. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Sky conditions, clouds, few 5000 feet. Temperature, 13 degrees Celsius. Altimeter, 2974 inches. Yachin. Information echo. Runway 08. Expect visual approach. Wind, 032 degrees, 09 knots, gusts 18. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Sky conditions, clouds, few 5000 feet. Temperature, 13 degrees Celsius. Altimeter, 2974 inches. Okay, you can see I've gone back to Victor 15, which is a frequency I want to use to speak to our flight elements. And let's go back to our list 6 page to see where we are in our alignment. I'm going to go outside and just um, check our control surfaces are all working. they all look good and now our alignment is complete you can see the flashing light there now do our final setup on my HSD now we're good to speak to the ground and ask them for a taxi ground Request taxi for departure. Good morning, Falcon 1, you are number 2 for departure. Taxi, in hold, short, runway 08. Okay, ground has given us clearance to taxi out and hold short of runway 8. You can see the uh, previous flight is out there, waiting to take off. So you can see the, the comms presets we've got there. It's UHF-2 and VHF-15. Now I set those using the data cartridge um, from the Michel schedule screen and that can be anything you want these are the most sensible ones that uh, I've chosen so let's uh, roll out we'll break off <coughs> and go into just gone into track IR mode now so once we get to the threshold of the takeoff runway we need to stop and hold there and that then um, ground are going to <coughs> request us to switch to to the terror frequency and terror, terror is going to be the entity that gives us a uh, clearance for takeoff. Falcon 1-1, one, one, contact tower for takeoff, switch to 269500. So 269500, I could thumb that in, it's uniform frequency, or else I could just switch to uniform 3. So I'm going to do that, uniform 3, and enter. And <clears throat> once we're at that frequency, now we can talk to the tower, and I'm going to call up the tower menu. Tower. Ready for departure. Focus one, each on tower, position and hold, runway 08. Okay, so tower has now granted us permission to go on to active and hold, waiting for takeoff. We're still... Uh, uh, about a minute and a half 
to go before we're due to take off. So we're going to push out. And we can see the rest of our flight are coming behind. I'm never sure which side of the <coughs> runway my number two is going to align on. But I'm going to align on the left, left hand side. And I'll keep an eye on where he's coming to because I might have to switch to right. I've got him vulnerability switched on which prevents um, my number two from crashing into me. No, he's coming across our way, so I'm gonna have to move. The air brakes on, or um, <coughs> wheel brakes on. I'm going to now switch our heat probe on. Oxygen. Master arm is good. Safe. Um, seat belt or seat ejection needs to be armed. Caucus one, each on tower, way zero three zero at three knots, runway zero eight. You're cleared for takeoff. Contact departure. Okay, so I didn't have to request that. Remember. <coughs> Once the time allotted elapsed, he's given me clearance to go. Now we've requested that we uh, contact, we switch to departure. So I'm going to switch from comms from from um, uniform three to uniform four. And remember, we don't uh, do anything with this until we're airborne. We then contact uh, departure. So ready to take off now. I'm going to push through our parking brake. Pushing steer two. Full mill power. Brake off. A little bit late. Departure. ATC departure. Report airborne. Falcon 1, reach on approach. Fly heading 355. Okay, turning to heading 355. So we're just going to extend a little bit more with my flight and then we're going to request landing. Four, airborne. So while we're up here, I'm going to <coughs> talk to my wingman, and I use this using the wing menu. Wing formation one, close up. Two, closing up. 
So I'll just choose another menu to get some information from him. Wing mission. Say status. Two, all clear. Okay. So <clears throat> now that we're out of ground, I'm going to push to tactical. So I'm going to do this by changing comms to comm 6 and then I'm going to talk to AWAX. AWAX main. Request picture. Falcon 1-1, one, one, Chalice 1, picture clear. And I want to show you the dependency on the frequency, so I'm going to change the frequency and call that again. AWAX main. Request picture. So you can see there was no reply <coughs> because we weren't on the correct frequency. We're going to try again. Here's our, the rest of our flight coming into position now. You see our two, that's our element there, <coughs> three and four. AWAX Vector. Vector to home plate. Falcon 1, Chalice 1, Four, home plate bearing 140 20 miles. 140 okay, for 20 miles, so it's right behind us. So I'm going to get our wingman to close up now. Formation one close up three closing up four three formation one close up three closing up four Okay, we're 25 miles out of um, range now, so we're going to start uh, and request uh, an approach. And remember, this stack order we started on is we did one, two, three, four, and then we have seven, eight, and nine. So seven should be our our approach. So we're going to select uniform seven. ATC approach. Request vectors for visual approach. Good morning, Falcon 11 E Chan approach. Welcome back. Vectors for VAR approach. Runway 08. You engage 2975. Falcon 11, turn left heading 185, descend to 6000, maintain 300 knots. Falcon 11, turn left heading 165, descend to 5000, maintain 300 knots, runway 08. So it's 185 Falcon for 6000 and down to 300 knots. Falcon 14, turn left heading 190, descend to 9000. Falcon 1 2, turn left heading 180, descend to 5000, maintain 260 knots, runway 08. Falcon 1 1, turn right heading 165. Okay, 165. And now it needs to drop down an altitude. Our 
altitude, altitude. Falcon 14, orbit for station 9000. Falcon 13, orbit for station 8000. Falcon 11, turn right heading 170, descend to 5000, maintain 300 knots, runway 08. So one seven zero for five thousand. A little bit low there. Falcon 13, turn right heading 125, descend to 5000, maintain 280 knots, runway 08. Falcon 11, turn right heading 170, descend to 4000, maintain 250 knots. Falcon 14, turn right heading 085, descend to 5000, maintain 280 knots, runway 08. Falcon 11, turn left heading 070, descend to 4000, maintain 230 knots, victors to final, runway 08. Falcon 12, descend to 4000, maintain 270 for 4000, runway 08. Falcon 11, turn left heading 060, maintain 230 knots. Okay, we see the runway out there, so we're very close now. Now we want to slow down in speed. Falcon 13, descend to 4000, maintain 270 knots, runway 08. Falcon, one two, turn left heading zero seven five. Now I'm going to turn on. I'm going to two three zero knots. The final. Runway I'm going to turn on the finals before she gives us um go ahead because she normally does it too late. Falcon one four, descend to four thousand. Maintain three zero zero knots. Falcon 13, turn left heading 075, hold 4000, maintain 230 knots, the first final runway 08. Falcon 11, maintain final approach course 080, slow to approach speed. 
Falcon 1-1, contact tower, done final, switch to 6 9 5 0, zero. Falcon. ATC Terror Request landing Falcon 1-1, one, one. each of the hour, continuing down 4, runway 08 So you saw that I switched from um, Approach to tower. A little bit turbulent out here this morning. Bit of a crosswind there, 15 knots. Falcon 1 1, each on tower, weighing 030 at 5 knots, runway 08, clear for landing, check gear down. Remember we have a full <coughs> stores package on, we haven't ditched the stores, so we'll be a little faster than normal. Falcon 1-2, on final. Falcon 1-2, each on tower, continuing round 4, runway 08. Okay, because of the um, extra load we had to be coming in a good bit faster and uh, we need pretty much all the runway to land here. Falcon 1-4 on final. So once I get off here, a terror is going to request Falcon I move on to ground. Falcon 1-2, each on tower, continuing down 4, runway 08. Falcon 1-2, each on tower, weight 030 at 3 knots, runway 08, clear for landing, jet gear down. Falcon 1-1, one, one, contact low, switch to 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 0. So I need to push to uniform 9 for ground. ATC ground. ATC ground. Request taxi back to ramp. Falcon 1-1, one, one, taxi to ramp. You are cleared all the way in. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of the uh, comms ladder now. I can go park up and shut down our engine. I could request them to put chocks back on and to put the EPU pin back in and I would do this on the current channel. So I hope you found this useful as an example of how the um, comms ladder works in BMS 434. And a little bit of background at the beginning, I hope you found that useful to show how the frequencies are assigned dynamically and uh, what you, what are the differences between it and the previous variants of, of the game. Suffice it to say in summary that the new, um, the new code is much uh, more user friendly and more sensible. Falcon, um, request taxi back. Although there are probably some uh, improvements that, that can be made, and I'm sure that the BMS team Falcon, will one, two, catch you back to the ramp. Continue, all the way in. Yeah. continue to improve them. Um, one thing, for instance, uh, the menus that, that show up, it, they probably um, could have um, only the menus appropriate for the frequency around showing up, but that's, uh, that's something that, that may be planned in the future. So if you have any comments, Falcon, please uh, leave one, them. Three, If you have any comments, please um, don't hesitate to leave them.
and uh, until the next time thank you for watching